The philosophy behind the war on cancer is the war against tumors, against the disease. And uh, uh, as Hippocrates said, there are no diseases, there are patients. Because every patient, even though they may have the same disease, they will react in a, in a different way. And that's why we named our book uh, uh, the Art and Science, because there's a lot of art that goes into medicine. And so our philosophy more is to treat the patient rather than the disease. And uh, by doing that, we have been very successful. In fact, our statistics uh, of the studies that we have been able to publish uh, show that our, our methods are much, much better than conventional medicine alone. Now, our therapy is integrative, okay? We have everything available for uh -huh. the patient, but uh, uh, our stronghold is, is really on natural, non-toxic therapies, and uh, that's only a part of it. The, the other part is that we also address the emotional and spiritual needs of cancer patients, and I truly believe that this combination is what has uh, made our treatment so successful. And uh, being very honest, the reason why our success is much higher is because there's a tremendous amount of miracles mm. happening at the Oasis of Hope. Daniel, I wanted to get your take on this whole notion of combining the spiritual with the physical. Cancer does seem to me, and based on what you were saying, Dr. Contreras, to be something that is perhaps holistic in nature. I would even contend that there are perhaps emotional and of course, I'm not a doctor, don't play one on radio, but that there are emotional and even spiritual stressors that could result in someone contracting cancer. Let me, let me ask you if, if that's something that's, that's accurate or a bad perception on my part. And please be honest. That is something that, <laughs> Don't humor me. <laughs> yeah, that is something that intuitively my grandfather, who founded the hospital, and Francisco's father, Ernesto Contreras, intuitively he knew that. And so he started the hospital to minister to the whole person, body, mind, and spirit. Fast forward a couple of decades, and now the clinical studies have been done and have published that see the connection between your emotions and how your body is functioning. So when you have a thought, if you, or an emotion like sadness, it will depress your immune system. Joy will boost your immune system. So how does it work? When you have a thought, neurotransmitters are sent from your brain to the uh, hypothalamus and the pituitary glands, then, then send signals through the spine and through the blood to the adrenal glands that are going to let out cortisol if you're if you're having a negative. So this is a uh, fun word to try to say. I might even fail, but this discipline is called psychoneuroendocrinology. Wow. Psychoneuroendocrinology. Doctor, Endo please. Immuno. Oh, you're missing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So psycho neuroendocrino immuno. Wow. Uh, I would ask you to spell that, but we have a limited time in our interview today. <laughs> it's a long <laughs> But it's fascinating. And, and while this is not necessary, well, go ahead and finish your thought because I've yeah, got another Yeah, so the connection is, is there, but what I love is that the Lord revealed that to my grandfather before the science could catch up. Anytime scientists look at the Bible, the Word of God, and say, that's not scientific, it's because their science has not advanced enough to understand <laughs> the it. concept. And so finally the advance has been made and we understand that connection. What still has not been defined by science is that connection from the spirit to the emotions. Mm. But intuitively we know it. And Dr. Contreras explains it best about spiritual fortitude. Well, uh, our reaction to life is with emotions. And our emotions are either gonna be functional or dysfunctional against whatever uh, stressor comes against you. When you have spiritual fortitude, your emotions are gonna be functional. That's why the Apostle Paul, Paul said, you know, my tribulations and suffering, sufferings are mild and temporary in uh -huh. comparison to the glory that is to come. So he had that fortitude spiritually to have a positive reaction against very negative things. And that's why he said, all things come together for good. Oh. Because lastly, God has the best intentions for you as far as your eternal life is concerned.